Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we're going to continue on with our Series 8 content. Like I mentioned in our previous episode, we've not got long left. We've only got about a week left of Series 8 before we move into Series 9. So it's a nice time for us to kind of wrap up with some of your rental teams. And this brings us on to today's team that is brought to us from Cody Finlay. I think that's how we're pronouncing the surname. Apologies if not, Cody, but thank you so much for providing the rental. And it's going to be a real pleasure to feature this team, especially because we've got a real kind of common old combination that we haven't seen so much in Series 8. We saw Alberto Deza uh, in the Players' Cup 3 pilot this in the Global Finals, a uh, very similar combination with the Reggie Gigas and the Weezing, to some amazing success. So it's really nice to kind of feature this team today. Uh, obviously, we've got the Reggie Gigas, we've got the Weezing, the Zashi in there as the Restricted, we've got Urshifu to kind of support everything. Then we've got another option in the team with a Weakness Policy, Lapras, another one that we featured in our previous episode, uh, but this time alongside the Whimsicott, Sees a bit more of an offensive kind of mod to getting that Lapras kind of set up and going and being a real threat in this format. Really looking forward to the team as always. Here's the rental code if you want to try it out for yourselves. And if you do, as always, do let me know down in the comment section below. And um, we'll have a couple of games with the team now. Hopefully pilot it, explain how it works and things like that as we normally do. And then wrap up with the rental at the end. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode, friends. Sit back, relax, and we'll get into our first match of today okay first up today we have a team of Kurum white sableye regieleki urshifu incineroar and volcarona so uh, you've got a classic combination of uh sableye and the Kurum white they're going to provide fake out support quash support uh just be a real nuisance for us to deal with but we do have a way of getting around at least um the prankster support that the sableye provides here uh at least with regigigas and Weezing, um i feel like it's a good lead the one lead that i would kind of worry about from my opponent coming out would be regileki urshifu that makes things a little bit more tricky for us of course to deal with i think we bring zash in um is lapras gonna be i don't know Lapras feels all right here, but I mean, without speed control, it doesn't really do very much in the late game uh, in particular. I mean, it can deal with, with Incineroar, but it doesn't have really the best of matchups against things like Urshifu, at least. And I think Whimsicott, probably with the Tailwind support for something like Zashian, probably comes in way more useful in a late game situation. We've just got to be careful that the Sableye something, if it does come, which I can imagine it will, we take down as early as possible because... That Will-O-Wisp threat is going to be really problematic for us because we've got predominantly a lot of physical attackers in our team um, and being burnt is not really uh, how we want to kind of progress in this match because it will kind of go south very quickly if uh, if we can't keep a, a handle on the Sableye. But Weezing with its neutralizing gas definitely helps out with that. Um, max Strikes definitely help out um, against a bunch of stuff on my opponent's team like i say okay so we'll see this lead so i think what we need to do is max strike the curum and then taunt that sableye and pray that it hasn't got a mental herb um which i doubt it has because of the kind of the, the more popular taunt users in this format are all kind of pranks they users right so it would make more sense to not need it because dark type and not really affected by that we'll go for the taunt into the save light completely shut it down now we might see a fake out and a max quake from the um the restroom into wheezing which is which isn't ideal but with the sugar berry i think on the wheezing we should should just about be able to take it uh, which will allow us a little bit more maneuverability going into the next turn where we can protect it Pick up potentially a knockout onto the cure. I'm not worried so much about the save light because of the taunt that would get off into it. So we'll see how it plays out. But there's a lot of possibilities here. Um, and cure and white, one of those Pokemon, it's so strong, you know. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see it knock out the Weezing even with the Shooker. Or is that an exaggeration? Is that an exaggeration too far? Do I hold cure and white too high? <clears throat> I don't know. Okay, well, we get the max strike off. No fake out coming out. You would imagine it's going to be Will O Wisp from that. Uh, save line. We do a good 50%, just about, just just around 50%. Drop the speed of everything, uh, which is useful. Uh, we get the taunt off into the save line, which is the biggest thing for us. And like I say, unless it's got a mental herb, we don't need to worry. 
which it hasn't. Max Wormwind coming out, which is a nice option, you know. It doesn't activate the... Jeez, it does so much, so much damage. It does so much damage. Like, that is just ridiculous damage, isn't it? It's just ridiculous damage. But it is Life Orb. Can't will a wisp us. And now we can we can max strike again. And we just sludge bomb. And that, that combination will be enough. Sableye might be forced to kind of switch out here. Which we may force a max guard from the, the Cure and White. But if it doesn't max guard it down. And we take a little bit of a lead. With Warn Dynamax uh, turn left. Got to worry about foul play as well from Sableye. Because that's like predominantly going to be its more common option of attack if it has got an option like a lot of players kind of opt to just go for support moves it makes sense with the prankster um you can fit a lot more kind of utility on there but i always personally like foul play uh, it just gives you an outlet in situations where sableye maybe isn't as useful as it, as it previously was so um <clears throat> reggie lecky coming onto the field do we see the max guard it would make sense now no max guard huh yeah, not quite enough, but we know the Weezing should outspeed now. Um, obviously, with that attack drop, that's why we've missed the knockout, you know. Uh, but hopefully, the Sludge Bomb is just enough to squeak the knockout and doubling up into that slot. Um, and I don't know if my opponent... Well, they probably should, they, they would have realized that, you know. Like, that doubling up there makes a lot more sense just because we had that attack drop from the Max Wormwind initially. And it's a nice way... Like, Reggie Gigas Weezing deals with something like Kieran White so well. Like we've just seen, you know, Kieran White, normally one of those Pokemon I don't really like facing too much because of how difficult it is to deal with at times. Um, now, do we Max Quake or do we, um, do we Max Strike again? We could Max Strike again. Do we Max Quake? Um, hmm. Max Hailstorm might be good for just breaking potential Sashes, you know, into the Aleki. But then the special the, the special defense boost is is pretty pretty big here for us I think as well. Um, am I that worried about? I'm not really that worried about the Aleki to be honest. I think I prefer to go after the Volcarona. Um, and yeah, double. I think probably double up into it. You know. Yeah, just to get rid of it. There's a Thunderbolt. We should take that. Yep. No! Okay, we take that, I think. Yeah, just about. Okay, that's fine. Um, the struggle bug coming out. Not enough to get the Regigigas. Probably better to go for a fire type move there into the Regigigas, you know. We did risk losing it quite cheaply there, but uh, it kind of paid off, I guess, in the end. And we're going to get a sludge bomb into Regigig. Uh, the Regieleki, I should say. Regieleki, as uh, Regigigas does finally go down to that recoil damage. Okay. Well, the Sludge Bomb into the Aleki is useful. It's minus two speed now as well, which makes Zashin's life a whole lot easier when it comes onto the field. Get the poison. I wonder what my opponent's last Pokemon is. Um, so, what I'm going to do is bring in Zashin. And we'll see. Okay, it is the Sableye. Okay, that makes things a bit more tricky, of course, because now we, we have to taunt this Sableye before we can make any use out of this Ashen. So we have to protect. We have to taunt. It's so obvious that this comes out, though. So I don't know if the Sableye's got Fake Out. It potentially could. Or if it just goes straight for the Will-O-Wisp. They go Fake Out into Zashin. Okay, well. Okay, Thunderbolt. This shouldn't be enough. No. Is that special defense? No, we haven't had the special defense boost, have we? No, we didn't go for Max Quake in the end. What am I talking about? Anyway, we're in a great position now to just switch Weezing out, get the Aleki, and then get Whimsicott onto the field, which will make things like so much easier for us. We get that Intrepid Sword boost as well from switching the Weezing out. Sableye does get access to its Prankster ability again, but now being Taunt, uh, it doesn't doesn't really have much support and merit going forward at least so we'll be able to lock this one up pretty pretty safely yeah my opponent's like only option now is that faker which is a little bit unfortunate they don't have or seem to have the foul play 
Behemoth Blade going to be more than enough to get the Aleki and then the four save live versus the world. So the teams function pretty well in this first one, uh, for sure. I think we've had a, an easier matchup than we probably could have against some of the, the bigger teams in the format. So it's maybe eased us in a little bit uh, to this episode. Um, it's going to be more challenging, I think, if we come against, you know, those, those, those kind of top tier teams. We're saying I'm not taking anything away from my opponent, but, you know, Kieran White isn't going to be one of those, like, top restricteds that we've seen. You know, I think if we see something like Zashian, going to make it very difficult. Uh, Groudon as well, another Pokemon that can be tricky, especially if it's got screen support uh, with it. Um, so I think Zashian's probably the one that is going to be the, the kind of toughest test for this team. Uh, even though you can kind of stop that intrepid, sword boost i just feel like the the, the the archetype of the team in general is going to struggle against zashin especially because you're you're kind of in that situation where you want to max strike will-o-wisp but the substitute always kind of makes that makes it a difficult process so we will continue good game to my opponent there and we'll jump straight into our next match of the episode next up we have what we were wishing for or not wishing for but it's going to be a good test we've got grimmsnarl zashin rotom heat gastrodon uh, Landorus Therian and Rillaboom. This feels like it's going to be a struggle. The synergy here is very good. Obviously, the Rotom Heat synergizes well with Zashian and the Gastrodon uh, and that Rillaboom as well. So there's lots of good switching synergy in this team. You've got Intimidate support from the Landorus. You've got screen support from the Grimmsnarl and potentially speed control there as well with things like Thunder Wave or Scary Face. Um, yeah, the Zashian is very difficult to deal with very difficult to deal with and we take a lot of damage kind of early on from the from the opposing Zashin. um hmm. how do we approach this one like reggie gigas feels like a good option it's just i hate the fact that if we go f like toe to toe with a Zashin, you know it's it's always going to be it's going to be tricky to 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 not get hit for like ridiculous damage isn't it um Lapras doesn't feel very good here at all. I think we go Zashian and a last Pokemon. Do we want to go Whimsicott? Probably not. I think Urshifu probably fits in a little bit better in this last slot. But with a band, it makes it difficult to kind of utilize in an endgame situation where you may need to kind of just alleviate a little bit of board positioning, uh, adjust a little bit, uh, and the band just doesn't allow that. The band, you kind of need to probably utilize a little bit more with something like whimsicott but um I, options are pretty limited here and i did say at the end of that last game you know i feel like we need to probably play a, a higher tier team and this definitely falls into that category for me i definitely think it's a it's, it's a difficult team to kind of come up against okay well we don't see the zashian straight away which is music to my ears and definitely music to my eyes if that's even a saying it's it's not <laughs> is it so uh right what are we worried about then hmm do we just start boosting special defense here rather than anything else and go after the i mean i have to go i have to start going after the gastrodon really but i also want to kind of go after the grim snarl as well uh okay 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 let's max strike let's go for a well, we have to protect we have to protect here i think we protect this turn we can max we can max quake the next turn to give us a little bit of uh support against something like the gastrodons max quakes or just earth powers if they do decide to come out with them but i think what you do against the majority of the time I, I like the feeling that i get against regigigas is you know you slot you, you you kind of just bide your time it's like approaching a lapras team you know you kind of stall out the Dynamax and then you approach the match if you are not in too bad shape from that point. But it's hard to get around the damage output. The sheer damage that, you know, you see from Regigigas is just ridiculous. And nothing maxing here. You know, my opponent allowing us to get the Gastrodon so easily like that. It's, um, yeah, it's not it's not really great. A great start for my opponent, but, it's, uh, you know... I think just because it shuts down the, the ability for my opponent to get that reflected with the prankster and sometimes it, you may kind of forget that. I know I've been in situations before where you're kind of like, ah, oh, 
the prank says not an effect <laughs> you know and it, it really kind of costs you in certain terms and this is like the momentum swing that you get with reggie gigas you know uh zashin now coming in the reflectors up of course uh but we do have kind of a clear path to just max quake here and just go for a will-o-wisp now if we see a substitute which is definitely likely we haven't got that intrepid sword boost um so i'd imagine what we'll see is potentially a behemoth blade into regigigas or we'll see a substitute now either way we get the will-o-wisp onto the zashin unless it protects unless it protects but then grimsnarl's not really posing us too much of a threat right now anyway yeah it protects so Grimmsnarl going to go for some further disruption. Maybe Thunder Wave. Maybe Thunder Wave. Max Quake's always going to be useful against the special attackers. But I see the primary threat right now is going to be the Zashian. But my opponent knows about the Will-O-Wisp after this turn. They probably knew about it anyway. Um, but you, like, the Grimmsnarl here, like, like I'm mentioning, you're not, it's not in a position to kind of pick up a knockout against anything that we've got on the field at the minute. Thunder Wave makes things very difficult, but it doesn't it doesn't alter what we're kind of how we're approaching this match, you know? Um I think we go max hmm. Do we go max quick again or do we go max strike? I think it's the max strike's more useful because it then allows Zashin to kind of our own Zashin to come in and not have the, the issues against the opposing Zashin. But I don't know if a max strike is going to be enough to break the sub. It surely is, right? It surely is enough to break the sub. It's got to be. It's got to be. It got to be. Got to be. I would imagine. Coming off Giga Impact, I know it's resisted, but still, it should take twenty-five percent to his Ashen. Should do. We're not going to see. That's interesting that we don't see the sub. They're just going for that pure damage. It's fine. So we could have got a max Quake off, but. As long as we get our will o wisp off, we're all right. And we get the max strike, yeah. So that would have been enough to break the sub. So, um, especially with the life orb kind of on top of that, which helps out a bunch. It's just making it easier to deal with the Zashin in an endgame situation. That's really what we want to be doing. Uh, Spirit Break coming out into Weezing. Going to be able to soak that up pretty well because of the partial poison type in there. Um, and the will o wisp coming out. Ah, oh, come on! And misses. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I mean, it happens. It happens, doesn't it? A high horsepower will take down mm, Zashin. And um, we kind of can. Can we cover bases by? Or do we protect here? Do we protect? Because the Zashin could protect, and we could see the the the, the Grim Snarl attack into Regigigas with a Spirit Break. It may be enough to take us down, you know. Maybe enough. No, I got high horsepower. And I think what we'll try and do is just get a Will-O-Wisp into the, the Grim Snarl. We'll see. I'm going to be annoyed if that Zashin protects. It doesn't protect. Okay, so the yeah, the speed drop there, enough. Helps us take down the Zashin. Uh, the Will-O-Wisp, we'll probably go after. I think we will attack after the, the Grim Snarl. So, Spirit Break. Oh, it goes Light Screen. Okay. Hmm. And they've still, you know, my opponent's still got access to their Dynamax. So they can still Dynamax this next turn. But the thing for us now is that we've got kind of a clear path to winning with something like Zashin, depending on what my opponent's last Pokemon is, of course. So let's see what it is. We've taken care of the Zashin, uh, Regigigas. I didn't expect to do that as well. Okay, it is going to be the Rillaboom. Um, I think we go for a last, last ditch Giga Impact. And I think we go for the Willowest because at this point, you know, the Rillaboom, if it goes, okay, it's not going to do it. But if it did go for the Max Quake there, we've got the Shucker still intact. So we could still get a Will-O-Wisp onto it and kind of close it out. So good game to my opponent. Regigig is doing good things again. Um, and we'll be able to uh, to wrap this up. So we'll jump across to the rental code and uh, just remind you what today's team is, friends. Okay, friends, here is the rental code for today's team. Just a big shout out again to Cody for the team and providing us with it. It's, uh, it's been a really fun combination and team to kind of utilize today. We didn't see too much of the Lapras, but I'm not really too sad about that. We uh, had Lapras in our previous 
previous episode so it's nice to kind of be a bit more centered around something else and that Reggie Gigas wheezing Zashian core is very very powerful and then you've got the interchangeable slot there with the Oshifu the, the Whimsicott for that Tailwind or just really all out power from the Oshifu really nice team really well put together and uh, it's nice to be able to feature your rental cards on uh, on the channel and of course I'll be doing this again in series 9 so we'll get through a bunch of the top tier teams like we like to do in the channel at the start of the series some fun ideas that I've thrown together in regards to approaching different ideas to approaching the metagame and things like that and then we'll move into to some of your rental cards because I always love featuring teams from uh, from you all so thank you so much for always providing them and uh, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode give Cody a shout out down below in the comments and uh, let us know what you think about today's team but I'm going to wrap it up there friends have a great rest of your day and I will catch you all for another episode very soon so until then take care and bye bye